exposed as predators. From teaching the female fans how to talk on video call. You bend your legs and then you arch your back and you don't have to. You do it faster. So it's like to making a okay. hand down there as a part of a live show. You want a cheese ball? Um, I'd love one. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. There have been countless YouTubers whose blatant Yo. behavior has led to the destructive downfall of their public image and their career. Hi, I'm the internet anarchist. I create- There's a line that is like what today, makes it funny. Diving deep into the internet. What makes it bad. Beloved YouTubers as predators, starting with none other than Wilbur Soot. Wilbur first gained success with collaborative Minecraft Wilbur. videos on the Dream SMP, garnering over 6 million YouTube subscribers and 4.7 million- it's always the Minecraft SMP boys, man. These gooners, dude. Million followers on Twitch. His indie rock band Lovejoy also won multiple awards and performed to packed venues worldwide. Wilbur's superstar status was on a path to grow even more. That uh -huh. was until two of his ex-girlfriends came out with some horrifying allegations against him. It all started on February 21st, 2024, when creator Shelby Shovel hosted a stream titled Talking About Something More Serious. During the stream, she revealed that she was emotionally and physically by an unnamed ex. Most notably, this ex had a habit of biting her and not in the- Wait, it's this guy? Uh, he had this habit of biting which is so weird to me now, but he said that he had had this habit since he was a kid and even his mom said that that was true. They'd even agreed on a safe word for when the biting got too aggressive. So we were gonna use a safe word um, so he could learn where my limit was, where my pain tolerance ended. Uh, and saying that out loud now, doesn't sound uh, yeah like that sounds, sounds but the behavior escalated forcing her to use the safe word every time but sometimes that wasn't even enough now at this point weaponized the safe word and was using it to ensure that i was hurt and on a constant basis and Hello. he wasn't sorry anymore and while she didn't give out a name viewers quickly identified wilbur as the one she was talking about and this wasn't just speculation either for starters wilbur was also british just like the ex shelby mentioned more importantly Wilbur had a habit of biting, something that other people like Nikki and Suit Rihanna had previously brought up. Uh, Will bites both me sometimes, what? and I get so many bruises all the time from him <laughs> biting me. What? Well, why? Why are you still? Why are you still with the dude that loves to bite? Like there, there. I, I feel like there's like, like there's nibbling, and then there is like just actually biting. Like that's just weird, bro. Like, find someone else at that point. Before you were saying that you bite people. No, What's wrong with that thumbnail? Me. On February 28th, 2024, Wilbur made a tweet which confirmed that he was the one Shelby was talking about. Reading, In the past week, a series of allegations have been made of my conduct from an ex-girlfriend. Though it wasn't much of an apology, as he basically denied the allegations in a roundabout way. Reading, The allegation of a... Bro, you have to blur out so many me. things, Throughout bro. our relationship, this behavior was consensual, playful, and reciprocally enjoyed. Soon after Shovel's story went public, another victim of Wilbur came forward. On the 9th of March 2024, Alice shared her experience of dating Wilbur back in 2019. She mentioned his toxic behavior and also confirmed the biting allegations, stating, I have also no experienced way. the biting habit, which already had been elaborated on by Shelby. But the worst part of her allegations was about when the two met up again in 2021, after their breakup, reading, I ended up blacking out in his bed due to the alcohol, but the last thing I remember was him non clothes, unquote. You can't this even say, you can't even say non-consensually? What is wrong with YouTube right now? Was career as everything he'd built over the years came crashing down. He lost over 250,000 subscribers in only a month, and, and his channel has only continued to decline. Wilbur's actions permanently stained his career and future. Though, despite nope. the internet's vicious backlash, he never listen. Listen, you can go get your own at uh, the Gamer Subs. No, I'm not sponsored. But you can go get your own. ...legal repercussions and flew under the radar of authorities. However, the next person on this list wasn't lucky enough to dodge prison time. Austin started his YouTube channel in 2007, gaining massive support in the beginning for his acapella style rock song covers. This is staying your lane, boy. Lane, boy. 
He eventually began creating original music, which was also a huge success. Who is this? During this time, he gained over 500,000 subscribers and okay. over 41 million views. But everything was about to fall apart, as his channel would be banned from YouTube. It all started going downhill on the 10th of May 2015, when Pub Fresh yo, published Yo, whatever we do, whatever we do, we cannot bring this hairstyle back, bro. We... People are trying to bring the, the 90s clothes back, the 80s clothes, they want to look like hippies. The one thing we can't do is bring this hairstyle back. Please, please, man, don't do it. Revealing evidence of this thing is inappropriate behavior with his young followers. The article also discussed Austin's inappropriate chats with a year old reading. He sent me a video of him teaching me how to talk. Ava, Chris Tyson. Said, okay, now it's your turn. I didn't think he actually wanted real talk here, especially since I was effing Austin even gave her step-by-step -step instructions, asking her to twerk for him. <laughs> hey cutie, um, so this is like the first basic <laughs> Hey cutie. Oh, oh hell no. Nah. what you do. You stand with your legs apart, <clears throat> you bend your legs, and then you arch your back, and you lower your and you do it faster. So it's like this. <laughs> if that wasn't disgusting enough, there was another young girl that he was allegedly going out at the same time. Hi, my name is Aurora, and this is a story about how Austin Jones wanted me to twerk for him. Aurora was only f at the time when Austin sent her similarly instructions on what he wanted from her. So it's like this. Again! Considering the amount of chat screenshots that surfaced, <laughs> it's safe to assume he had even more victims. If he didn't speak up fast, his career would be doomed. So, on the 20th... Nah! ...wanted from her. So, it's like this. Yo, bro, why is he getting in on it, bruh? Why? Considering the amount of chat screenshots that surfaced, it's safe to assume he had even more victims. If he didn't speak up fast, his career kick? would be doomed. So, on the 28th of June 2015, Austin released a video addressing the allegations, titled, Setting the Record Straight. Oh. During the video, he straight up admitted to soliciting twerk videos from fans. I've recently come under some fire on social media for mistakes I've made in the past. I used to ask fans for twerking videos. Yes, twerking the dance move. It's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that I think is right. And I shouldn't have done it. However, he conveniently left out details about their ages. He right. He claimed that the twerking videos were the extent of his actions. There are a lot of rumors and a lot of lies. They're just not true. Uh -huh. Nothing ever went further than twerking videos. He then spent the majority of the 16 minute video trying to deflect attention 16 from his actions minute by video. talking about his traumatic past. I experienced death and loss at a very young age. Um, I had an older sister. She passed away no, when bro, she was trauma 10 dumping. years old. I was 6 years old at the time. My father was an alcoholic and addict. Bro, bro, he, we don't care. We just want to get to the point of you were trying to solicitate uh, twerking videos from your fan base like that's just weird bro he couldn't get control of his life because of it he even tried using it as an excuse for his horrible actions all of yeah, there are no excuses events, all of these deaths this loss left me with a really deep deep depression and I'm, i was an insecure depressed guy and i began does someone who is insecure Able to send instructions, like detailed instructions on how to twerk to like their fans. Searching for attention in the wrong ways. This would be the last time Austin would address these allegations uh -huh. and go back to making music as if nothing happened. In 2017, Austin even put out a video announcing exciting things to come. I love you all dearly and I want oh, some God. exciting news for you very, very soon. But what happened next was far from quote exciting. A week later, Austin was stopped at O'Hare International Airport, Chicago and was arrested on two counts of production of CP. Now that the authorities were aware of his crimes, it was a matter Bro. of time before he faced the consequences of his actions. In May of 
2019, Austin pleaded guilty and got 10 years in federal prison and an additional eight years of monitored release. YouTube star with a large teenage following is headed to prison. A judge sentenced Austin Jones to 10 years behind bars. The 26 year old singer pleaded guilty to child back in February. It's important to remember that Austin was in his 20s when he sent these videos to Oh Cupcake my god. celebrity status for personal gain. That being said, he wasn't the only YouTuber who pressured his fans to share explicit content with him. Jakishi, or Demetrius Matson, started off as a small but humble Minecraft streamer. He soon oh got my god. By dream. No, right? it's over. It's over. It's over. Bro, I don't know what Dream's superpower is, but like every single person that he seems to invite to his SMP comes out as being a predator like is, is this is this just like this has to be a superpower the most popular minecraft streamers at the time who raided jakishi's stream yo uh holly holly ash uh yo what's up what's up wait what 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 huh he hello leading to a sharp increase in Jakishi's followers. Yeah. With a tweet reading, I'm still so shocked. I went from like 1.5K-ish to 11.5K-ish in four days. His career received a significant boost when he was asked to join the famed Dream SMP Minecraft server uh -huh. known for bringing success to its members. Jakishi ended up amassing 57,000 followers on Twitch, 27,000 followers on TikTok, and over 7,000 subscribers on YouTube. And All on for being on a Minecraft bigger. server. But before he could enjoy this newfound success, everything went south. Just two days after the Dream SP announcement, a tweet about him by user Velky began making rounds. Reading oh, here we go. Experience with Jakishi slash Demetrius. It's linked to a tweet longer. Here it is. Valkyrie summarized her experience with Demetrius. She detailed how the two started off as friends. But as time went on, Demetrius's true colors began showing. Reading, over time, the dynamic shifted from nothing more than platonic friends to him being sexual towards me. She also linked screenshots of Demetrius repeatedly saying that he'll send her blanks. And if this wasn't <laughs> disgusting enough, Demetrius took things to another level of depravity when he asked her to meet her alone in a hotel room. Oh reading, my god. If we would have met up that summer, I would have been... Bro, bro, it, it's like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to just not like kids, bro. <laughs> Yo. It's not, it's not that hard, bro. While Grow he was up. 20, alone in a hotel with a man who said he'll quote, try to not make advances on me. The post got enough traction to reach Dream, and he took immediate action. Of with course a tweet he reading, did. Removed Demetrius from the SMP for gross accusations that he also confirmed privately were accurate. However, this oh. was only the beginning of Demetrius's downfall. Near the end of her tweet longer, Valky stated that she knew that she wasn't his only victim. And this has turned out to be 100% true. When, within days of her tweet going live, 18 more people came out with Bro, accounts of similar- why does it always take one and then the waterfall happens? Like, why- Like, in today's day and age, like, why would you not just want to be the first to do it? Right? Like, everyone knows how clout works. Everyone knows, why would you not want to be the first person to do it? Why do you wait for someone else to do it when when all the cloud is just waiting for you? Similar experiences with Jakishi. Even then, the allegations kept flowing in. And by the end of the week, approximately 40 people had opened up about uh -huh. their experiences with Demetrius. Needless to say, the internet quickly turned against him. His Twitch was terminated I why. in terms of servers, and every video on his YouTube channel was deleted as well. Jakishi basically vanished from the internet without a trace and hasn't tried to revive his channel since. However, the next person on this list is still desperately trying to restore her once successful YouTube career. Colleen Ballinger, famous for her internet persona, Miranda Sings, cultivated her career over oh, more than a Oh, yeah, the violin girl. million subscribers across multiple channels. At one point, she toured the world, performing her one-woman comedy act. You just gotta sing on this song, but you can sing Uh, she even got her own Netflix show, Haters Back Off. Bam, Miranda, you're famous. She was idolized by an audience for a distinctive humor. 
However, Colleen wasn't just making her fans laugh. On the 28th of April 2020, a YouTuber named Adam McIntyre posted a video titled, Colleen Ballinger, Stop Lying. Adam talked in detail about Colleen's creepy behavior. The most shocking part being that she sent him lingerie when he was a young teenager. They find my Twitter so funny that they said they needed to send me bra and panties that Corey was wearing during the live stream. Now, looking uh -huh. back at that, I'm still a I'm still 17. Two weeks later, Colleen released a video titled Addressing Everything, where she explained her actions were intended to be part of a joke where she would send various items to her fans. And I've always given out weird, random things in live streams. I've given out a taco costume. I've given out old bobby pins, dirty shoes. A few weeks ago, I sent a fan like a single piece of toilet paper. I've always given away weird stuff. And so in my mind at the time, this was no different than all the other weird stuff I send to my fans as a joke. And surprisingly enough, this apology actually right. went well for her with comments reading, so proud of how she explained this and apologized. She didn't cry or anything, just a straight up genuine apology. Yeah, that won't age well. Bullet, but not for long. In 2023, Colleen came under fire again, when countless tweets about her predatory behavior began surfacing, reading, Colleen Ballinger making gestures with the end of a microphone into her sister's mouth and more pdf file jokes under the disguise of miranda it quickly became clear that this behavior wasn't just a one-time thing what appalled viewers most was how she used her character miranda sings to say and do inappropriate things to cupcakes like asking a cupcakes, cupcakes. To reach into her pants for a snack <laughs> you want a cheese bomb? Um, I'd love them. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. Colleen was also exposed for calling on stage only to objectify them. With ample what? evidence like... against her, it would only be logical for Colleen to issue a sincere apology. But instead of doing that, she uh... did something completely unexpected and bizarre. On the 29th of June 2023, here it is, here it is, video Chad. Where instead of apologizing, she sang a song with a <laughs> ukulele. All aboard the toxic gossip train, you're chugging down the tracks of misinformation and totally denied any allegations against her. This video would go down as the yeah. worst YouTuber apology ever made. And yeah, the yeah, yeah. Were as expected. Colleen's attempt to dodge the criticism destroyed her YouTube career. This caused her to lose over 100,000 subscribers between June and August in 2000. That's not that's not a whole lot. That's like when you when you uh, you're upwards in a 20 million, 100,000 is not crazy. Despite her loss, Colleen continues to post videos on her vlog channel as if nothing happened. However, she now has only a fraction of the viewership she once had. This is in stark contrast to James Charles, who despite facing severe allegations, mm. somehow managed to successfully regain his online audience. James Charles rose to fame as one of YouTube's most popular figures, captivating fans with his makeup tutorials and amassing over 23 million subscribers. He collaborated with famous creators like PewDiePie, James Charles, where are you? We have to play Minecraft. <laughs> Hi, sister. Hi, sister. <laughs> and even became a host of a reality TV show. However, his career was about to suffer a significant blow. At Coachella 2019, is he back? James was seen in a photo with a mystery man, starting dating speculation. But in a since deleted tweet, he clarified that, Nope, unfortunately, I am still very single. This boy played me for months and is a disgusting con artist. That's when Gage Gomez, the Instagram uh -huh. model he was photographed with, responded by alleging that James had actually pressured him into situations despite gomez clearly telling him that he was straight james then saw this as an opportunity to manipulate me as a person who may or may not have been trying to figure things out about the after the fact of telling him that i was straight james then posted a tweet uh -huh. to explain the situation that's that's who he went after every... though he, he loved it he he loved like uh, uh trying to turn straight people right like that that's what it was Thing that happened between him and i or was he or is he on board with the, like the, the 17 year old talking, he never once said that he was straight and the internet moved on from james that is until february 2021 when a tiktoker named isaiah posted a video alleging that james had sent him inappropriate messages he started making the conversation very very really uncomfortable 
and I'll post some of the stuff that he sent me now. You can't see it because it's blurry because I took it on my iPad because I don't want him to see that I screenshotted it, but I'll post it right now. He proceeded to send me explicit pictures of his body. In a follow-up TikTok, Isaiah revealed even more screenshots of James sending him a pictures even after Yo. He him his age i was getting really uncomfortable so i told him my age i told him i'm 16 meanwhile he's 21 he's a grown man and then he proceeds to say oh but i didn't get to see the yeah meaning my body james responded by accusing isaiah of lying about his age reading the accusation that i groomed this person is completely false i asked how old he was and he told me he was 18 so i started flirting back Isaiah stated that James lied in his tweet, uh -huh. clarifying that he never said he was 18, as his bio clearly stated his age. By this point, James must have realized that his tweet wasn't enough to make the allegations oh, go what, away. What's with the... That's when he released a video addressing the allegations and their severity. First and foremost, I need to say sorry. Um, I owe a massive apology to anybody that I've hurt or anybody that I've made uncomfortable with my actions. And the reason it gave for his Bro, it just actions, doesn't feel authentic. I think I have to, and that is that I'm... Desperate. Viewers were also quick to point out holes in his arguments, with a tweet reading, Accountability is admitting you're wrong. Period. No excuses. Uh -huh. But even if James didn't hold himself accountable, the internet certainly did. And the backlash was brutal. James's channel was demonetized by YouTube, and he got dropped as the host of Instant Influencer. His hey, bro, TV I hate show. I hate how they just demonetize, bro. Like remove them from the platform. Like, don't give them the platform that they're allowing themselves to prey on on the younger generation, dude. Like, just remove them. Remove their whole channel. Not only that, but James also lost million-dollar makeup deals. However, well, yeah. despite all this, James was determined to repair his reputation by continuing to produce weekly videos. And while he has been able to revive his reputation significantly, the same can't be said about this next creator. Craig Thompson, better known as Mini Lad, became a YouTube star with oh. his Call of Duty gameplay, Cards Against Humanity sessions, Mini and Lad. Twitter videos. These hits helped him amass over 5 million subscribers. He collaborated with famous creators on the platform and yeah. was set to grow even bigger. Five YouTubers, Mr. Beast, I am Wildcat, Mini Mentor, Lachlan, and myself. We all came together with one goal, to make the world's biggest influencer Zoom call. That was before his whole world was shaken up by a series of allegations. On the 24th of June, 2020, two of Craig's former friends, Haley and Ash, accused him of manipulating them when they were underage. In Haley's yeah. tweet longer, she wrote, he sent me pictures of him in his underwear to show off his bulge of his blank. With someone else who will come out that I'll retweet. Yo, nice. Much, bold man much like much what shit. what do they think right. what do they think they were gonna like what did, what did he think he was gonna get out of that so like oh wow what a nice bulge like what why 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 the bulge pick ash's account was even more horrifying reading the subject of he came up and he asked if i was a and i said yes then asked if he could take my and i told him yes Things escalated from there. She also mentioned they can't say virgin. Manipulate her into meeting him alone, and they eventually exchanged pictures and messages. Quick pause. Did you know how data brokers collect and sell your personal information online? No. It's alarming to think that anyone can access your details, which is why I use today's sponsor, Delete Me. It's an incredible service Delete which removes me. your data from hundreds of websites. After signing up, I received a privacy report showing how much of my information was exposed online. And it was a huge wake-up call, considering I try to be as safe as I can online anyway. But Delete Me took action, removing all my personal information from the internet and uh -huh. continuing to monitor for any new exposures. Another great part about Delete Me is they also help protect your loved ones by removing linked information, ensuring you have a complete peace of mind when you're on the internet. What I love most about Delete Me is just how simple it is. All you do is just plug in your information and Delete Me's privacy experts do the rest of the work. I was really surprised by just how much they were able to find. Every Everyone deserves to have their privacy protected, so don't wait. Use my yeah, but like at joindeleteme.com slash anarchist for 20% off. Thanks again to Delete Me, and let's get back into the video. Seeing the public support that Hallie and Ash I had, uh, I had one of those things like that, but it ended up leaking my IP to stream, bro. Because it was like a random pop-up in the bottom corner of my, of my uh, screen, and just, hey! Your IP might be hacked or might be leaked, and it's just like my whole IP address right there. Just gotta be careful with what you download, guys. 
Craig published Stay on an top apology of on Twitter, stating, I take full responsibility for the inappropriate texts and messages I sent. I am truly sorry for what I did. I will be back when the time is right. To Craig, oh, the time was okay. right was August 12, 2020, when he posted a now deleted video titled Minecraft, but all the mobs are me, explaining that his hiatus was due to mental health reasons. I know I just left all of a sudden, but I just, I, I, I needed to do something about me. And I never took time to- what, what what makes me not understand something like this, right? So, people people who are, like, in this position of they have- uh, their, their career is YouTube and being in front of a camera, whatever. Their career is YouTube. What makes you think that the next person that they catch is not gonna be you, right? So, like, all your previous messages, everything like that, what makes you so confident that you're not going to be caught? So, why do it at all? Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, like, just swerve the allegations, right? That's just not how the world works. Once one person can catch you for being a predator and release it to the public now the entire public eye has shifted against you and will never be back in your favor i don't know where people just think that they have this uh, ability to just not get caught but like at the end of the day you're gonna get caught bro to work on me and it's been just don't do it lovely to be able to talk and find someone your own damn out. age after which he kept posting regular videos as if nothing ever happened craig was trying to escape the allegations he had previously admitted to but Haley wasn't going to let him get away with it Ooh. on august 16 2020 Haley uploaded a video giving further details about her traumatic experience with craig he made himself the victim when i was the one who was 16 sent bulge pictures because he Bold needed a boost of ego pictures. and he gets turned on when a f tells him his f is big shame on you like Haley said it was becoming clear that craig had a habit of lying and ignoring his past but this situation uh -huh. had now degenerated into something he couldn't escape on the 4th of september 2020 craig uploaded a video titled clearing the air which was five minutes of him avoiding the allegations and again focusing on his mental they always health. avoid them the next thing that i wanted to talk about is therapy I outlined it in my oh original my tweet God, back bro. in June at the bottom like, saying it, that I will be working on myself. Dude, dude, trauma dumping never works. It never works, bro. It, you're, you're not going to get sympathy points. You're not going to get pity points because your life was hard growing up. Or that you have mental health issues. You still preyed on a child. Like, it, it, it's not going to go away. And I will be attending therapy from now and on into the future and a lot of people deem that to be untrue but i want to be here on record saying that since then i have been going to therapy every single week and i will continue to go to therapy every single therapy week. for what later, he posted yet another similar video titled my apology the reason i did what i did and there was even a message where i said this is because what i said there is true yeah like I what did try to end my life at the beginning of 2017 to many viewers, it was clear that Craig was trying to use his mental health to get out of a sticky situation. Exactly! Despite his repeated attempts to return to YouTube, Craig had lost over 450,000 subscribers in 2020. His channel was also demonetized, and his only sponsored video was removed. Bro, bro, and again, again. Dude, just demonetizing is not gonna do anything, bro. You gotta remove the entirety of the account on the platform. Like, don't even allow them a chance to have a comeback. Like, bro. Because at the end of the day, if they do it once, they will do it again, man. Even though he still occasionally puts out videos, his views have significantly decreased. Minilad did a poor job addressing the allegations against him. But compared to this next YouTuber, Minilad's response almost looks responsible. Marcos Wilton, also known Who as is Maker, launched his YouTube channel in 2013 and reached his peak in 2018 with over 800,000 subscribers. He gained okay. popularity for his Minecraft videos, particularly his series titled Survival Madness, which endeared him to fans. Bro, you, you can't make this up. It's always the Minecraft YouTubers, bro. It's always the Minecrafters, man. Like, why? 
Hey guys, Linemaker here from Linemaker Studios, bringing you once again another episode of <gasps> Survival Madness. Bro, I've seen oh. I've seen more on Minecraft than I have on Roblox. But then again, so much on my feed has been popping up on catching Roblox predators. Like everyone is trying to catch predators in 2024. Also collaborated with Minecraft creators like MZ True. It's a new trend. Stampy Longhead, just catching which predators. Which boosted his channel's popularity, but soon his public image reached a turning point. On September 15, 2015, Keemstar posted a video featuring an interview with a mother who alleged that Lion Maker had solicited pictures from her teenage daughter. Then, then he asked her to send nudes. What is your reaction at that? I mean, it's a, it's a 27 year old man asking your. Your old daughter for well at this point in time i didn't know he was 27. it was just this was a person i had no idea who was what made this allegation even more damning was that marcus was fully aware that the girl was only 30 years old before he asked your daughter for did he know how old your daughter was absolutely absolutely oh my February god 24th, i had an interaction with him on Facebook and I said to him I'm very grateful that she has somebody that she can feel she can open up to right um but you must bear in mind she is only a yeah old despite this he completely denied the no. allegations claiming that his Twitter was hacked and that the hacker intended to frame him since oh. Marcus had no proof except for his word viewers were hesitant to believe him and his word became even harder to believe as more accusations came out he in was December hacked same year a video titled my crazy PDF file experience with oh my studios with proof was posted in the video 16 year old boy named Stephen Shinks claimed Marcus offered him $500 for images of himself Stephen said he refused the offer but line maker had already transferred the money through paypal five hundred dollars he's like oh hey i'll send you some money on paypal if you send me some nudes i was like what the fuck uh, yep Despite this, Marcos continued to insist that he was being hacked, but this would change in November of 2016 Bro, what? when Colossal invited Marcos for an interview on his channel and put him on the spot with some hard hitting questions. You can say the same for me. If I'm in a relationship with a year old, I'm 28, same age as you. Is that f up? It's a very, very simple question. You only have to answer yes or no. I, I don't, Colossal. Because it's, 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 I find it's, it's, interesting that you're dodging that question when it's a very I'm not question. dodging the question. I don't think you can I, answer I it. I think you, your, moral, I, your moral compass is completely f and you can't answer it. Marcos's inability to answer a simple question made him appear even more guilty in the public. Yeah. Game, and his situation was about to get so much worse. The final blow came in December 2018 when Marcus's ex girlfriend released a video titled My Experience with Lion Maker. No, it's she always their experience. The abuse happened from the age of 14 to 17. Um, and that pretty much was being shouted at, being screamed at. Having my name cut into his arm, um, chairs being thrown out windows, laptops being thrown at walls. No, he's just crazy. It was all my fault. Him drinking because he knew I hated it, and being an alcoholic and getting angry, it seemed to like, he seemed to like play off of my fear. There was no reviving his career after this, and ultimately, in January of 2018, both of Marcus's YouTube channels were deleted. Marcus oh, tried to cheat the finally! In 2019, when he made another channel, but this would also be deleted in June of 2020. The last glimpse of Marcus on the internet was during an Instagram live session, where viewers witnessed him having a tragic breakdown in real time. Is this what helps you feel better about yourself? So sit there and cuss me out and call me out and call me whatever the fuck you want to call me. You're watching me. You're watching me. You are watching me. Line maker completely yeah. broke down when it was time for him to address and allegations against him. We're watching you be a predator. To another YouTuber who was able to talk about his crimes on camera with a straight face. Tom Willett, better known as Feature Man on YouTube, initially pursued acting and had encounters with numerous celebrities during his Hollywood career. After retiring from acting, he launched his YouTube channel, Feature Man, okay. and gained fame in 2012 with his viral video titled How to Eat a Watermelon Tutorial. 
Hello watermelon students, today I'll be doing a tutorial on the correct way to eat a watermelon as you can see right here. The channel garnered over 450,000 uh, subscribers uh, okay. and 2 million views. Fans believed that this innocent old man could do no wrong, but they couldn't have been more mistaken. And it's always the old man. In 2023, a mysterious Reddit post surfaced with the caption, A jury found appellant Thomas Willard guilty of three counts of violation of NRS 201.190, the infamous crime against nature. Upon taking a closer look at the newspaper clippings attached, it became clear that Tom faced three cupcakes blank charges in the past. He would frequently volunteer at shelter homes but with an ulterior motive. As news spread, Tom decided to discuss details about his conviction in a now deleted YouTube video titled My Jailhouse Adventures, recommended for adults only. During the video, he acknowledges the conviction while still tiptoeing around the actual crime he was convicted for. About 1977, I uh, became involved with the court system once again. I was arrested and I was sentenced. And the sentence, that is creepy. Uh, was life in prison. Implying that NRS 201.190 was a corrupt law made to punish homeless. Uh, if a police officer didn't like you, they could uh, charge you with infamous crime against nature. If you had any sort of contact with anyone other than uh, a man and a woman who were married to each other. Anything else was considered an infamous crime against nature. He went on to explain that he was able to avoid three consecutive life sentences due to legal technicalities and his connections with influential friends. Anyone who's in a situation where you are dealing with uh, law enforcement that is not proper, do stand your ground. I did not make any deals with any police or district attorney or uh -huh. anyone everything happened because i happen to have some friends viewers were quick to point out the lack of remorse in his tone and one even found damning evidence from the deleted video where tom wrote i was rich with friends and they helped a lot feature man deleted the video within an hour of uploading it but it was too late to save his image now he oh began God. to speculate that he had a history of inappropriate behavior, pointing to previously unnoticed tweets as evidence. His channel, which once boasted a healthy 450,000 subscribers, now stands at 376,000 subscribers. I mean, that's not bad. His total subscriber count has been declining ever since the truth about his past was revealed. Feature Man's career downfall goes to show that the past is inescapable, and the internet will always hold people yeah, accountable, of course. even resorting to undercover operations to expose them. Bryant Moland, also known as EDP, EDP. and online fame as a passionate Philadelphia Eagles fan. Known for his lively sports commentary vlogs, mukbangs, and direct-to-camera rants, he also made frequent appearances on Comedy Central's Tosh.0. This is that painful point in every Dolphins season, usually around mid-November, when all hope is lost, and I turn to the NFL's official odds maker, eat that 445. <laughs> Yo, Daniel, what the f*** it is, my n***? Thanks for having me on, dog. His channel amassed over 2 million subscribers, beloved by his audience for his candid and unfiltered opinions. But Yo, Brian w? soon discovered that even his most loyal fans had their limits when it came to supporting him. It's like, uh, it's telepathy. In rumors began circulating about EDP sending inappropriate messages to some of his fans. Some even posted a tweet containing videos of EDP's conversations. What shocked viewers the most was about his disturbing way in which he talked about Lucy, you better show me some I don't give a f like, come on, you want me to wish that happy birthday, motherfucker? You better show me some fucking t something, that. Oh my god, EDP, like, she's f***ing, like, she's f***ing motherfucker. I don't give a f if the b is a f motherfucker, like... Ain't shit free in this motherfucker. And that wasn't all. EDP's chat recordings with a f***ing girl shit further free. revealed his predatory behavior. Where would you like me to keep good? Because I really want to taste your... I bet it tastes really good. Wherever you like, good, because I'm gonna kick and lick you from head to toe. With such damning evidence against him, Bryant had to provide an explanation. But what he did was far from that. In a one minute long video, Bryant used the allegations piled against him as an opportunity to make an ill-timed joke. If you honestly believe that I'm a motherfucking you're fucking hot. Not knowing exactly how bad this joke would age. During this yeah, time, yeah. a YouTuber called Raven was dedicated to exposing ADP for his crimes. 
though, who was having tough luck, since EDP's fans weren't ready to believe him. That was until one of Cold Raven's followers decided to set up a trap for EDP. They set up a fake yeah, account pretending to be a up. and successfully lured EDP into messaging them. And that was when Brian's fate took a turn for the worse. On the 18th of April 2021, Brian was intercepted by Predator Poachers on its way to meet a Old Predator girl poachers of catch him in the act. When questioned, he claimed he was merely going to pick up a cupcake in a statement that quickly went viral. Chet Goldstein from Predator Ooh. Poachers posted the video titled "Famous YouTuber EDP 445 Caught Meeting Year Old Girl," exposing Bryant for his predatory behavior. Chet's video revealed EDP for who he really was, and the internet didn't like it. His channel lost a ton of subscribers and was eventually deleted in April of 2021. It aged well, though. Like, now everyone, instead of just saying child, they say cupcake. Like, it aged so well. Even lost his job as a security guard and struggled to make it. Yeah, because of Reddit. In attempts to return to the platform, Bryant uploaded an apology video on the 7th of July, 2023. I want to take full responsibility for my actions that happened on April 21st, 2020. Um, the entire YouTube shit that went down, the entire YouTube incident. And it almost looked like he was taking accountability until he started playing the victim card to gain sympathy. I've received numerous fucking messages, screenshots from my friends and family. Um, you know what I mean? Them getting harassed, them getting bullied, them getting fucked with by people. You know what I mean? And um, it's all my fault. In a later video, Yo. he took back his apology. At least you got tomorrow off. directed to his friends and family. He said that you did admit to like talking to like a year old girl, that you made that apology. But so the apology wasn't for that? What? So I'm, I'm kind of confused. Like, No, the apology was towards all the people that hurt directly. Was to my friends that I hurt directly. What's set up, bro? That's what it was. And it made sense that Bryant wasn't apologetic, since he was caught yet again in another 2023, this time by Jadeon and Skeeter. No, Wait. Man, seldom at a loss for words. You know, two years ago, you were caught my ass in 4K trying to meet a year old. Wait. I'm not talking to you. Again? Oh, I gotta watch it. This video sealed his fate, and although EDP 445 wasn't arrested, his story serves as a classic example of justice prevailing. The same can't be said for Plasma Master Don, who was able to dodge three consecutive life sentences. Plasma Master Don was a YouTuber celebrated for his unique covers of popular songs, like Joji's Slow Dancing in the Dark. You're so great. Yeah. His channel garnered over 500,000 subscribers and was well loved by viewers because of how wholesome his content was. With one comment even saying, YouTube is about doing what you love. Keep going, mate. However, his facade of being a kind internet grandpa was about to fall apart. On December 12th, 2020, a number of Reddit posts exposed the truth. Reading, Plasma Master Don, a sweet old man who does song covers, just recently has been registered as a vendor. The posts also linked to a and uh, revealing that 73 year old Donzel Edward Owens was convicted of a position against an cupcake in August 19th. See, there it is, cupcake. As the news spread, viewers began to suspect that Plasma Master Don and Donzel Owens were the same person, a claim that Plasma Master Don denied. However, further investigation revealed that Donzel Edward Owens' birthday, September 10, 1947, matched the one in the YouTube channel. And if that wasn't evidence enough, a Donzel Edward Owens' car was a white 2005 Buick Century, the same car that Plasma Master Don owned. Good morning, YouTube. I've had a few requests on uh, making a video of my car. This is a 2005 Buick Century Custom. Not to mention that it was clear that they shared the same eye color, hair color, and glasses. Realizing his audience expected a response, how do you how do you try to disprove this? Out. On October fourteenth, two thousand and twenty, Plasma Master Don announced that he was facing serious health issues and that he might end up shutting down his YouTube channel. Some viewers believed that he was using his health issues as an excuse to avoid the allegations against him. With one comment saying, "Don't try and hide it with a health cover-up," Donzel Edward Owens Jr. 
He uploaded his last video on the 18th of November 2020, and soon after, Donzel Edward Owens Jr. passed away on the oh. 21st of December 2020. Whilst Donzel's crimes remained hidden from the public for a long time, in contrast, this next YouTuber posted his crimes online for everyone to see. During YouTube's early years, James Jackson, aka Onision, gained significant attention for his sketches and parodies. His video, Banana Song, I'm a Banana, has garnered over 94 million views on the platform. He's on TikTok now. He also owns multiple other YouTube channels, including Anision Speaks, Uh Oh Bro, Encore, and Archive. Yeah, and like, Anision... like I said, uh, let's not bring this hairstyle back, guys. You can bring back your hippie clothes, you can bring back everything, okay? Just don't bring back the hairstyle. Still widely known and remembered on the internet to this day. Over the years, Onision has faced criticism for profiting from objectifying content. He frequently rated pictures of women and shared his opinions about their bodies and whether he would date them or not. So I'm at Onision.xyz, going to do my normal routine where I go to pictures for videos. I organize the topics by most viewed, and now we're going to cover exactly what you guys demand. How Onision rate you 1 to 10? It's what you want, and so I will deliver. The most uncomfortable thing about these videos were their s undertones. Yeah, solid 8. What's correct? What are she s years old? Uh, well, last time I checked, we're allowed to have opinions about people. It's not a perverted thing. But that was just the start of his creepy behavior. Allegations uh... against him became even more serious when in 2019, a woman named Sarah accused Anision and his husband of grooming her. She explained that she got close to them on an Anision fan forum when she was f Over time, she was manipulated into living with them, during which time they allegedly f her. Sarah also went on to say that Anision and his husband had relations with her when she had turned what? 18, something that he himself confirmed. Uh, once she said, you know, I'm only gonna uh, sign this NDA if you sleep with me, um, was the clear message there. Um, we felt pressured, like we had no choice, um, because I had remembered that comment prior uh, of her saying she could ruin my life if she wanted to. Onision claimed that he was pressured into the situation, but viewers didn't hesitate to point out the holes in his argument, saying, A teen pressuring two adults into s is the most laughable shit. His later right. videos addressing the allegations made the situation worse, as Onision attempted to justify his actions. When you start out at 18, it's like the smallest chance of having a Down syndrome baby. And then you go all the way to 35, and 35 it becomes like almost a 50-50 chance, um, according to my research. Uh, as well as other defects. Huh? So when you have people who are attracted to 18 and 19 year olds, you're talking about people who are attracted to people who are at the premium age for breeding. The claims against him gained even more credibility in January of 2021, when Chris Hansen, over here talking about breeding. Predator, launched a full-blown investigation on him. Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here on the YouTube Yo, w. channel Hansen vs. Predators and have a seat with Chris Hansen coming to you live tonight from New York City. And when Chris showed up to Anision's house for an interview, Anision called the police on him. 911, what are you reporting? Hi, uh, there's a person who's been stalking me online and they just showed up to my house. Okay, and they're outside now? Yes, they're knocking on my door. Okay. It seemed like Anision was surrounded by hate on all sides. And so his next step was to abandon his YouTube channel altogether. Uh, I just wanted to formally apologize for my behavior lately. And, um, He's on TikTok know, now. And announce my uh, retirement. But this didn't solve Anision's problem. In 2023, Anision was hit with a major lawsuit where he faced charges of and engaging in activity with a fan. Later, he posted his final goodbye in February of 2023 and hasn't been seen on YouTube since. Allegations on against Anision accumulated over a long period of time until they reached a breaking point. Even though the next YouTuber's story yeah. is still unfolding, it seems like he's heading in the same direction. Dr. Disrespect was once one of the top streamers on oh, Twitch. Here we However, go, in June man. 2020, he was permanently banned completely out of nowhere. This prompted him to move over to YouTube, where his channel now boasts over 4 million subscribers. Dr. Disrespect's mysterious ban piqued the interest of his audience, leading to speculations about the reasoning behind it. But no one could have guessed what was to come. On the 22nd of June 2024, a yeah, former Twitch Cody employee, Connors. Cody Connor, made a tweet revealing a secret behind the ban, stating, He got banned because he was caught 
in a cupcake. In the then existing Twitch Whispers product, he was trying to meet up with her at TwitchCon. Even though Cody's tweet didn't mention any names or contain any evidence, Dr. Disrespect felt it necessary to respond and ended up making the situation so much worse. With a response reading, I get it, it's a hot topic, but this has been settled, no wrongdoing was acknowledged, and they paid up the whole contract. Doc faced a ton of backlash I got paid. of this tweet and was compelled to address the situation once again, writing, I didn't do anything wrong. All of this has been probed and settled. Nothing illegal, no wrongdoing was found, and I was paid. Doc already started facing major career setbacks because of the allegation I was as paid. a game company co-founder terminated no their doings. relationship with him. The very next day, Doc issued a statement on Twitter in which he gave an answer for why he was banned on Twitch. He confirmed having Twitch whisper messages with them but stated that they only, quote, lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. Bro, it doesn't no matter. It doesn't it. matter if nothing illegal happened. You're still having inappropriate messages with a, with a kid, bro. Like, what are you, like... Uh, what? Bro. Okay. Yeah. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual, unquote. It's safe to say that Doc's response to the allegation was a complete catastrophe, so much so that his own friends made videos condemning him. As Nick Merck stated, And in that very tweet, uh, he basically confirms that, you know, he was texting an girl and it went weird sometimes, you know, and, and look, just to, just to be blunt and straightforward, man, I, it, that's, that's inexcusable. It's unacceptable, right? Well, Tim the Tapman said, Yeah. He knew that was a and those were the messages being sent. I cannot support that. Apart from that, Doc revealed that the Twitch ban in 2020 had cost him a Nike sponsorship. We lost out on a lot of big deals, a lot of sponsorships. I mean, shit, we had Nike. We were what, talking to Oakley. I mean, we were, and that's no joke, man. I could bring up a, a, Oakley prototypes right Who here. Who cares about this money, bro? Also led to YouTube removing Doc. Who cares about money when you have an allegation this serious on your hands? Like, why do you keep bringing up the fact that you were paid and that you're losing sponsorships? Like, who cares? From their partner program and him losing over 110,000 subscribers in the following two months. As news spreads and new developments in the story arise, Dr. Disrespect's situation is only going to get worse. And with his recent Twitter posts, it seems like he's going to try and make a comeback. Yeah. While he's leaning more into the right-leaning red pill community. Throughout the platform's Aww. history, countless YouTubers have been exposed as predators. While we've discussed several today, new and unexpected Yo. revelations continue to surface. No one could have foreseen that this would be the reason behind Dr. Disrespect's ban from Twitch. And it makes you wonder, who else is hiding these dark secrets behind their on-camera facade? Before we end this video, just one more thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring the video. It's a certain- Yo, W, w video, man. A and like, to, to the whole like, Dr. Disrespect thing, why did he not remove the act for this specific, like, what happened and, and the allegations addressing them and all kinds of stuff? Why did he not remove the act? But he did for whenever the, the it came out that he cheated on his wife. He decided to remove the wig, the glasses, everything, and he tried to actually have a heart-to-heart -heart that he was sorry for what he did, but he didn't do that whenever the allegations were that he was messaging a, a, a minor. Like, that's just crazy, bro. Like, it's just, it, dude, he just doesn't care. Enough. Reminds me of uh, how Ninja had a comeback when it was heavily under hard drugs. I don't think Doc's having a comeback like that, bro. And and to be fair, if we're if we're you know talking about Ninja, he didn't really make a comeback, bro. He's still he's still just like extremely petty with his backhanded compliments. It's just like he's jealous of everyone, and I don't think it's getting any better. Yeah.